Don came here again. Uh, he's going to tell us what's new with CG rates. Yeah, so thank you for organizing again, huh? all, all guys. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. So, uh, my name is Dan Bogos. I'm part of CG rates project for uh, who did not uh, hear about us yet. Uh, we are located in uh, Bavaria, Bavaria, Germany. Um, over nine years of experience with both um, server side solutions in wholesale as well as retail. And um, yeah, we, we uh, educate ourselves towards responsibly understanding the real-time processing constraints and what uh, everybody or a lot of us experienced the seriousness of, of light system outages. Um, this is our background. This is why, how we came up towards CG rates. We were uh, designing uh, large VoIP infrastructures and we needed um, a, a reliable Because uh, we have a lot of uh, components. Um, it's uh, a pluggable uh, solution, so you can get it in your uh, infrastructure. It's uh, able to uh, accommodate new components. It was designed to, to accommodate new components into uh, ISP network. Uh, for example, add a new VoIP switch in your network, an SMS service, and uh, put CG rates to help you billing that. It's uh, what, what we uh, focused on a lot. It's non-intrusive into existing setups, so uh, we should not participate into influencing your, your switch or your switch crashes. We just share information with your switch, and uh, it's the responsibility of the switch administrator to take decisions based, based on that. So the power, we, we transfer it to you. We don't uh, ask you to route your traffic towards a specific, uh, like, mammoth environment or, or something. It's, it's all pluggable. It's fully open source. Uh, the full sources you can find on, on GitHub, fork it, modify it, make it better. We are happy to, to do that. Uh, no add-ons, so we don't uh, put our uh, business models towards selling add-ons in, in separate, private. We don't do that. And uh, there is a community behind, ever-growing, and uh, you can get a hold of it over various channels. We are performance oriented as a, as a real time solution. We needed to, to be able to move a lot of traffic. Um, we, we have uh, focused a lot on building a, an advanced caching system. That's actually the, the secret be behind our performance. Uh, this caching system, uh, it's, it's transactional, uh, it, it has a lot of um, this, this LRU. The least uh, used uh, record, it will be kicked out, and um, hottest information will be always keep, kept in memory. Um, we, everything what we do, it's asynchronous, so it's towards uh, non-blocking stuff and performance. We use micro-threads for that, so we are not limited by the system threads and system uh, thread limitations. You can do, theoretically, millions of micro-threads. Test-driven development as a rating engine, this was the, the top priority for us. Uh, it sh we should be reliable, so uh, as, as I speak, we have about 1,600 tests, part of our uh, test builds. So uh, this, this works as our guard. We, we, are, uh, very, we feel more secure by, by uh, doing this. Uh, we have a modular architecture. We, we did it cloud-ready. Um, we have uh, microservices. You can, as I told you, we have various components which you can start, stop, make them talk to each other on the same uh, server or spread over uh, different uh, even locations. They all talk to each other between, uh, between themselves uh, over RPCs. This can be internal within process or between processes. 
it's easy to, to enhance it by rewriting specific component. You are not happy about our implementation. You take, for example, our, I don't know, CDR server out, you put your own and just keep our rating part and, and so on. Um, feature each, we, we do uh, various things. We do a buzzword at some point. Multi-tenancy from day one. Uh, we, we are a rating engine, again, the, the original part of the system with derived charging and A number rating. It starts being popular here around uh, wholesale carriers to do A number rating. Um, account balances, money uh, management with bundles. Uh, we do very complicated setups with bundles, combining data, SMSs, this kind of playground of uh, MVNO. Uh, providers. Um, we do session management or event charging with balance reservation or refunds. Uh, again, complicated uh, things. Imagine that you need to refund out of a, a bonus and so on. So it can, in, and also in real time, it can become uh, quite some uh, fun to work with. CDR logging, which I will talk a bit about today, with support also for interim records. We have uh, fraud detection with automatic mitigation, so you can leave the system uh, while you sleep to even shut down accounts for you. If something does not look right, you, you can do various escalation procedures and so on if fraud is detected. LCR uh, module with uh, QoS, so it can take decision based on the, the routes quality of your suppliers. Uh, it can do also LCR over bundles, which is not uh, very common but useful. Uh, you can get like 1,000 minutes, which can be used for free in the weekend from a uh, supplier of yours. This, this LCR is able to uh, consider that. Call statistics with pattern monitoring and stuff like that. Calculate ASR, ACD in real time and also react on it based on pattern. Diameter server, uh, useful again in uh, MVNO scenarios in 3G, 4G, XG. Then uh, resource allocation controller, if you want to give your customers a number of channels or resources, it's possible through CG rates. Built-in high availability, so we can um, have maintain uh, active, active, uh, various components, active, passive, and so on. Uh, there are a lot of combinations you can do inside. And we, we educate ourselves to be agile in developing new features. Uh, a bit about history. We started around uh, 2012. And ever since, we will keep pushing code. This code would represent features for us because we are pretty conservative in adding a lot of code. So our code, we try to, to keep our code base as small as possible, but it, it was growing out of unplanned feature uh, introduction and implementation. Most of our, uh, actually all of our uh, code is written in Go. We were quite uh, pioneers, pioneers in Go in 2012. When we started with CG rates, Go is, was in, in weekly release. So it was quite interesting to grow CG rates and uh, also Go. <laughs> so we, we grew together, I think. And yeah, we provide our own uh, testing tools so you can, you, you can estimate how fast your system is based on your own data. So you see a CGR tester. Uh, within the same process, we have estimated around 82,000 requests per second of, in calculations and outside uh, from a different uh, programming language from Python, for example, via APIs, we got uh, almost 5,000 requests per second. CDR server, um, this is what uh, the, the component responsible about CDRs. It's accessible via a number of different APIs, so you can push CDRs into CG rates via uh, JSON, HTTP, HTTP REST, GOB, whatever. There are a number of APIs already available to you. You can also push over offline CDR, CDR imports, so if you get the CDRs from your suppliers over CSV, XML, uh, fixed width uh, value, all these are supported. Uh, it's automated, so uh, uh, I notify will 
will tell us when you get the CDR into the folder and we automatically pick up so it's close to real time from the moment you, you push it in. You can mo we can monitor various folders there and uh, have uh, various impl import templates and logic per each folder. So uh, you get a lot of functionality also there. Uh, what's important for the open source world, we have um, plugins for um, a lot of open source uh, solutions. So we have uh, for Asterix, for example, uh, via ARI. Uh, we have FreeSwitch via uh, FSOC. Then we have Camailio via Evapi. And we also have OpenSIPS via the new module, which OpenSIPS uh, core developers uh, wrote it, mode CG rates. And uh, of course, regarding uh, the, the required thing by, by mobile operator, we have uh, diameter support. Uh, we have derived charging support. Uh, these things are a session emulation. So if you get a lot of distributors and resellers in your network, then you can use derived charging. You get one CDR and fork it into unlimited. So in this way, you can get reseller or uh, distributors chaining or inbound versus outbound traffic charging. So you know how much you need to charge your customer and how much your supplier will charge you. Uh, we have real-time CDR replication and um, CDR exporter for CDRs which we store. And the, uh, there is another useful component in regards to CDRs, uh, the CDR stats, which is calculating stats in real time for you. So you know, as I told, ASR, ACD, uh, PDD, and uh, or, or average call cost for the, the, queue, the CDRs which are in our queues. These uh, queues are very uh, performant, they are in memory, so you can get uh, quite heavy traffic uh, thrown on it. And a lot of uh, configuration parameters again. And also you can, it can be also part of fraud detection, so you monitor the stats of your uh, customers. Just a quick look on, the, on how you uh, can process the CDRs um, via various inter interfaces. We uh, pass it over through internal components. Uh, we can store it or not on our side, and that's that's the the uh, part I wanted to tell about performance. This CDR replicator can pick the CDR from the moment we are done with rating, which means few milliseconds after you have sent us the CDR, and it can send it to you via a number of transports. For example, it can send via HTTP JSON or uh, HTTP REST to you back, and or uh, put it in a, in a queue, the new uh, module which we have just implemented. So uh, it's, it's very useful because you can get your own database schema in this way, you don't need to query any more CG rates and you stay fast because on all this path there is almost no disk involved. So that, that means very fast. And from the moment you, you send it to CG rates to the moment you get it already rated on your side, it's few milliseconds. So you get CDRs rated like from the cloud, but with your own instance of rating. So um, I think I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so. I have time for one question, huh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do you have uh, tariff, pl uh, tariff plans based on uh, time thresholds, time, uh, time usage? Um, what do you mean by time usage? Uh, for example, you, 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 uh, after 1,000 uh, minutes, you have... Uh, Different price. Uh, a, different, a different price. Yeah, we, we do that through, through using different uh, account bundles or balances. So you give 1,000 with a price, and after 1,000 it's gone, automatically you consume out of another one with different okay. price. Okay. Yes, please. Um, what data type do you use uh, for computing the charges? Um, wh what do you mean by... Yeah, what data type? So, like um, floating point or special data type um, to avoid drowning errors, for example. Uh, how, how do we keep our balances, you mean? In, in float we keep, but we round after each operation on it. Okay. Because we, we had some, some issues with float type, 
but uh, we, we came out that you know in Go there is no stable solution yet for, for decimals like in Python is. So we, we work with float but every, after every operation we are rounding it. We apply, we apply rounding on it. So in the end we, we get like others are using big numbers for it because it sort of is the same solution but in a different way implemented. Yes, yes. Um, it in in uh, in the next couple of months. Yes, we are actively. It's a, it's an active project for us now. After diameter, it will be ra radius. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you very much. Thanks.